Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you for being here and tuning in. Today I'm doing something new and I'm introducing a new series called Colored by Felix Presents and I'm introducing other artists and creators to share their techniques and skills with you guys so hopefully it'll help you along the way and you guys can catch certain techniques and styles and put it into your craft and just enjoy and have fun. And today our special guest and a friend of mine, she is an amazing artist, her name is Alice Rosier Art. I'm really excited about this because I've actually been interested in how to use resin and she focuses today on how, to, how she uses resin and how you can be creative with it. And also all the materials that she uses, there's going to be links down below in the description so hopefully that can help you. She's doing a giveaway of this painting she's working on and it's going to be on her Instagram page so if you'd like to win, check out her Instagram down below there's going to be a link there and uh, apply don't don't miss out on this amazing opportunity to win an original piece from her and be sure to follow her and check out her works for future creations all right guys enjoy the video and let me know what you thought down below in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe and share and stay tuned for more hi color by felix fans my name is alice rosier i'm an artist living in new zealand Felix has asked me if I can show you guys how I made this piece of resin artwork. So I'm going to show you how I created this metallic abstract piece on aluminium board using resin, metallic gold alcohol ink and a few different pigments. I work quite intuitively so this piece kind of started out as one idea but evolved into another like lots of my work. Okay, let's get cracking and set up our workspace. So, key rules. Good ventilation in your workspace is a must. Use a respirator or face mask. That's really important to keep any fumes away from your lungs. And remember, keep children and pets away from your workspace. If you work with any alcohol inks, you need a non-porous surface. So I love working with aluminium. I've got all my tools ready here. I've got my aluminium board that I've lightly sanded. I've got my hairdryer and heat gun and my metallic inks and some neat alcohol to help with blending. Use protective plastic sheeting so your table doesn't get ruined and find some small feet to put under your board so that your board is easy to handle once the resin has gone down. Yay, now for the fun part. So I've kind of loosely marked out with a pencil the shape I was trying to achieve and now I'm adding my neat alcohol which is gold alcohol ink by Pinata and I think that's how you say it but I'm not sure and I'm blending it with some um, clean neat alcohol so trying to achieve some soft blends and some organic shapes and discovering how best to use my tools so you can use a heat gun you can use a hairdryer hair dryers are a bit more aggressive um, you need it on a low setting otherwise it just blows everything everywhere you can use a paintbrush and you can use your hand, but you just need to find your own way and experiment and see what you like. If you, if it evaporates and it sets onto the board and you don't like it, you can wipe it off with neat alcohol and that's the beauty of it because it reactivates and means that you can start afresh. You can see how you can group it together to kind of get a more sort of thick appearance or you can move around in the neat alcohol to create those softer blends. I'm such a magpie. I love how metallic and pale gold this ink is. It's just so beautiful to work with. And when moved around with the heat gun, it can create some really beautiful textures like this. Make sure you leave your ink to dry Mine was quite thick, so I left it overnight to make sure it's fully dry before applying the layer of resin. Okay, cool, now we're ready to put down some resin. I use a resin that's mixed in a one-to-one -one ratio of volume. Some resins are different. Follow the instructions carefully. Resin's very unforgiving. I'm gonna mix this up and I'm gonna add some of the clear down onto my artwork and then I'm gonna add some pigment into what's left to put that down on the artwork. Take into account the temperature and humidity in your workspace because certain resins need to follow certain guidelines, so always check the instructions. And when you mix up your resin, don't mix it up like you're making a cake, try and do it steady so you don't create any more air bubbles than are necessary. Thank you. 
you want to get all the resin around all the edges so just double check this you can run your finger around the edges use a mixing stick whichever you find easier now with what's left of the resin I'm going to add some pigments I'm using an acrylic blue here and I'm also added in um, a transparent blue so that I don't make it too opaque so I had a transparent dye and I had acrylic paint just make sure that you only add a little bit at a time and you check the color by placing a little bit down on the artwork because it always looks darker in the cup than it does on the surface because it's in a thinner layer on the surface when you're happy with that you can pour the rest on and again make sure that you take it all the way to the edges when you mix your pigments into resin always make sure that you give them a really good stir again make sure you don't add any more air bubbles than you can avoid but make sure you stir really well because once you've put it down if there's any streaky bits that haven't blended properly they will show up and it won't look good I'm blending the blue resin here into the clear resin because my intention is I will be putting some more gold ink on top to blend the two together Once your resin is all down and you've checked the edges, we need to remove any air bubbles that might be caught under the surface. Using a blowtorch, I'm going to methodically flame over the resin, bringing all of the air bubbles to the surface and it gives you an instant glass-like finish, which is really cool and it's quite satisfying. A really important side note is make sure you don't use the blowtorch for too long. Don't over flame it and make sure you don't get the flame too close to the resin because it will burn it. I'm just checking things before I leave the resin to cure and I found a little bit of fluff so having a cocktail stick or a little needle is really handy to make sure there's no imperfections left in the resin. Ah, it's a teeny weeny little air bubble that I just couldn't get out so I had to reflame with the torch. Now I'm going to take an artist break and let the resin cure overnight. My resin has cured overnight perfectly so the next stage for me is to key up the resin. So I'm going to scratch it up with a piece of sandpaper. This looks scary because you're going to put scratches all over it but when you put down your next layer of resin they are going to magically disappear. The reason we need to do this is to make sure that when you add a layer of resin it doesn't peel off this way it's got something to key into. So the next thing I'm going to do is put down some more ink. I'm going to use some more of my pale gold ink and I'm adding a little bit of blue alcohol ink just to give it a little bit of a soft gradient blend joining up my solid blue to the gold. This was my intention and I played around with it so it's not looking how it turns out at the moment so bear with me and see how it evolves okay guys this is when I go rogue because my plan kind of goes out the window and my intuitive art side kind of takes control this happens a lot to me it probably happens to a lot of artists but it does demonstrate that when you work with any medium you're not bound to how you started you can change your way by adding another layer, taking away some. So you can play around with this for as long as you want until you feel comfortable with it. I'm adding in some blue ink on top of gold ink, I'm adding gold ink on top of blue ink, I'm adding in the alcohol to blend bits, I'm pushing it around with the heat gun, 
I pick up a paintbrush and start adding bits on with a paintbrush. There's no right and wrong, it's very fluid and this is the nice thing about working with resin and with something like alcohol inks. I decided I was done, so I was going to put down my final layer of clear resin and leave it to cure overnight. And guess what? With fresh eyes in the morning, I did not like it. I had to amend this. Something had to change. Okay, so this just wasn't coming together how I had it in my mind's eye. I expect all of us have had this problem at one point. I hope it's not just me. So I played around, I added some more inks, and then I realized if I add some more gold ink to balance out the composition, and then I put a flood of transparent turquoise color in resin on the top, it would create the depth that I've achieved in other pieces of work. This is where I got to. I left the ink at this point and now it's time to put down my layer of turquoise transparent resin. Putting down a layer of one tone helps really calm the contrast and the busyness but gives it a lot of depth because when you catch it from different angles you can really capture the metallic. If you've never used resin before, you can play around and do lots of things with it, including putting alcohol ink directly on top of wet resin. When you do this, it makes the alcohol ink bloom and move around, particularly if you add some heat, it can really separate the ink. And it leaves a metallic finish on top of the resin once it's cured that's a slightly different texture as well, almost like a, a matte metallic, if that makes sense. It's really interesting texture and adds a new dynamic to the piece of work. So I'm applying some here just, just to give a little bit more contrast because I didn't want it all to be underneath. I think just adding a little bit of gold makes it pop and finishes the job.
check out these other examples of pieces of art I've created using the same method. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you've learned some new tricks. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, it's Alice Rosier Art. Or if you'd like to look at my website, www.alicerosierart.co.nz, this piece will be heading for a competition on my Instagram page. So like my page, like the post, give a thumbs up for this tutorial and you'll be in for a chance to win. Thanks for watching.